Hello, and welcome to another edition of Highlights from the Hill. Along with Dr. Kathy McLeod, I'm your host, Jim Cousins. Today, we're going to be talking to two new members of the Hawkington School Committee and kind of getting an update on what they've been doing recently. So, welcome to the show, everybody. That's right, Jim. We've been really trying to plan this show for a while. Yes. I'm so excited that you're here with us today. Thanks. Today, we have Mina Barrett and Jen Devlin, our newest nice school committee members. Um, and it doesn't feel like you're new any longer. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure it doesn't feel like that for you either. Um, but we're delighted to have you here. It's really um, an opportunity for people who are watching to have a better understanding of the kinds of things that school committee members do. And um, so with that, yes. why don't we start by just having a little bit of an understanding from each of you as to why you were interested in becoming school committee members. And maybe Mina will begin with you. Sure. Um, I was at a crossroads in my career and uh, in my personal life too. There were some events that happened that made me relook at my life and my choices when it came to my profession. And I went a little deeper to see where does my passion lie? What is it that I want to do going forward? And I felt very strongly about education. That's something that I've had all through my life. But somehow it was in the background, and I felt it was time to put it up front. And um, so I left my career in corporate world. Um, I had worked for a very long time. And um, I started to pilot some courses and programs for kids because I felt like sometimes the education that we have is not preparing us for the life outside. And I felt I want to address it very early. Um, and so I started doing that and I was talking to all my friends around in the community and they saw the passion in me and they felt, oh my goodness, you know, you're crazy, always talking about yeah. education. And um, I think there was positive reaction too, but maybe they were bored too. Uh, and, uh, and so one school committee member, Jean Birchman, uh, she asked me, having seen some of this passion and some of the community work that I was doing, she asked me if I would consider running for school committee. And I asked her if I can influence change. That was my big question to her. And she said, yes. I have to be truthful. I did not understand the complexity of the work uh, and how much it would take. Um, but I did my research. I read through all um, documents on the school website. I researched. I listened to a lot of school committee um, videos, thanks to HCAM. And so I finally felt I have something to contribute. This is absolutely in alignment with what I want for our kids. So that's how I got in. Well, it's, a, it's been a pleasure working with you and having you. And I hope that you have already realized that you are influencing, influencing conversation, influencing the ways in which we look at things and issues. And for me, as superintendent, the makeup of the school committee is so important. And it changes with the, with the individuals who are on it. So I hope you do feel that you have realized that, that wish that in, in, in taking on the tremendous amount of work that there is a result to it all. Um, so we'll hear from, from Jen and then we'll come back. <laughs> so Jen, you probably, maybe you had different reasons altogether. But Mine were a little different, yeah. similar, but a little different. Um, mine were more about, you know, at the risk of D d divulging my political um, alignments after the, the election in the fall, I was really concerned about the direction that public education may take. Mm. And I work in that field, so it was, um, you know, sort of even more concerning for me in my role as a teacher, but also my kids. Mm. We're, we're a great school district, and I wanted it to stay that way. And so. Um, I also got in touch with a school committee member, Lori Nickerson, a friend of mine, and she, um, she was like, great, great, you know? And, and so she actually really coached me through the process and, um, and was really encouraging to me um, because she, um, you know, she's like, this is fantastic because she knew that her term was coming to a close and she's like, this is great, you know? And so um, I felt like it was an area where I could um, contribute, that I had a, enough of a background, that at least a working knowledge. Um, it's funny though, I've definitely learned in the last six months that what you know as a teacher, and I was seemingly terminally in grad school for a long, long time, and, and even in that, you don't know all of the sort of background, all of the stuff that's happening in the background in, in the public schools. Um, so that it's been eye-opening, 
but um, I definitely wanted to make sure that I had a handle on how things moved forward in Hopkinton, um, especially in light of the changes that are happening at sort of a national and state level with, mm. with education. That leads me to wonder and to the next question, which is what has been a surprise to you? I was going to say the biggest surprise, but I think that there, you know, maybe even just in the role, kind of what did you not expect? What has been somewhat surprising that you've learned over the past six months? And either of you can answer. Maybe one of you is thinking something comes to mind. If you have something, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, for me, actually, I was thinking about this. I wondered if that would be something we were going to talk about today. Um, like I said, learning about the sort of inner workings of the administration has been really eye-opening to me um, because it was really fascinating to me how many people are involved in keeping not just the schools but the whole town running. Mm. And um, you know, all of the subcommittee meetings and things that we have to attend as members of the school committee, you know, you really, I had not known prior to being on this committee how you could pretty much every night of the week find a public meeting to attend. You could fill your entire week with public meetings and learning about things that are going on in the town. Um, and so that was one of the biggest surprises to me is how, you know, I thought school committee would be school committee, <laughs> but it's not. It's, it's board of selectmen and, and you know, um, um, town board of appeals and, all, and all, all the different inner workings of the town in addition to all of the other things mm. that are going on with the new buildings and, and trying to update older buildings and the, the fields and all the things that happen in town. I just wasn't aware of how many people are involved in that and they're all volunteering their time which yeah. is another huge piece. So it's, it was pretty eye-opening and surprising to me just the, the depth that, yeah. of, of work that goes on right. sort of behind the scenes in our town. Thank you. It was not so much of a surprise for me um, because uh, I, I kind of had an idea that there's work involved and it's beyond the three, four hours of the bi-weekly meetings that we have. I had that sense. I think it's been more of an education for me, just trying to understand what it takes, like Jen was mentioning, how the school is structured, what are the different functions that are out there, just getting a better appreciation of the superintendent's responsibilities, for instance. And like you said, all the volunteers. And one thing I do want to say out loud, beyond the volunteers, I think the volunteer fam the families of the volunteers, they share us mm. with the rest of the community. Right. I mean, my husband, I'm so grateful to him for his support. He takes care of my son on those evenings when I'm there till late night mm. or you know I suddenly have to drop and you know somebody has made an error about informing I have to just get up and go to a meeting I do that mm -hmm. because I have the support of my family and it's mm. taking time away from the family so kudos not just to the volunteers but also their mm. families mm. who support mm. So That's it's true. been an education for sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, I will say before I started working at HCAM, I volunteered at the community TV station here. And my volunteerism was covering school committee meetings. And ever since then, I've always said that the school committee is the brainiest committee <laughs> in this community. <laughs> it's just like the sheer amount of knowledge that is flowing through that meeting is just really, really impressive. So I was kind of wondering, like, what at working there. I know you guys, you, you talk about policies, and you talk about situations that are going on. You know, like, what, do you, what do you really enjoy? What are you excited about working on um, for the school committee? For me personally, just knowing the fact that us being there um, and being able to guide along with Dr. McLeod and the rest of the school, um, the course of where our schools are going, I think that's very humbling yet empowering. Mm -hmm. To me, that, that, that uh, is the focus. And there are times when I find it very challenging and I feel, why did I sign up for this again? <laughs> uh, but the fact that I am making a difference, I keep that as my guidepost. Mm -hmm. Did that answer your yeah, question? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I agree with Mina. And I, I definitely have to say one of the my mother was also a teacher and an administrator and is now retired. And when I told her that I was considering school committee, she was very encouraging, but she was like, just the one thing you don't ever want to have to do is hire a new superintendent. <laughs> 
And, and so I was like, okay, well, I mean, we have a really good one, so I should be okay, right? So then that is the piece that has been sort of, you know, the focal point for the last several months. And I, but, but, you know, in response to your question, I mean, I feel like we have been so fortunate having Dr. McLeod here for the last five years. And you, she's made, I mean, so many amazing contributions to the school um, and to f be a part of choosing the next person who will hopefully continue all of the amazing things that you have done and then maybe come up with some new things that they can you know add make it their own I feel like that's an enormous responsibility like what you said but it's I, I'm so glad to be able to have a hand in that because again I want to you know my primary reason for being here was to make sure that things continue to move in the right direction and I feel like that is such an enormous piece of things continuing to move in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I still refuse to believe that. Me too. Anything. Me too. So let me turn the conversation back to the school committee. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because I think that this is a really great thing for us to talk about. So let's talk about the superintendent search. Um, it's really related to everything we've just said in terms of the amount of time that you, I'm sure you had no idea right. or expected of what it would be. And I think it would be really important for the community to understand the process. So let's talk a little bit about how, what has been involved from the very beginning of um, screening right until where you are right now in the process. And you can both kind of, I know you've both been very involved, so sure. you can both help us with that. Yeah, I can, I can start, start okay. with even um, the search for the screening committee. Great. Right. right. Yeah. Did. yeah. That was a good place I, to start. I think it's a very, very rigorous process. Uh, very, uh, you know, involved with a lot of people, a uh, lot of eyes, a lot of thought. Uh, we started off first by looking at what should be the composition of the search committee. And we had three spots open for the community. Of course, we wanted a good balance of people in the schools, the community, the school committee, um, you know, the board of selectmen. And um, we looked at all those aspects. And I thought we had a great composition to begin with. And when we had those three spots open, we had 13 applications. And each one of those members we interviewed, it was myself and Nancy who had volunteered to take that on. And um, it was, again, an uh, involved process. We went through every person's credentials, their thoughts. We interviewed them. Mm. Yeah, and uh, we, it was not an easy choice. We had some former school committee members who, who had applied for it. We had some uh, uh, parents with, uh, who were so involved in the community who had applied for it. And we had to find the balance of the search committee and we were able to do that. And we were very, very glad that so many people had come forward. So we did that. That was the first step to finalize the search committee itself. Can I just step right in there for sure. the, again, the sake of the community? Sure. Because the, the reason, of course, in, in, in addition to the, the balance, was that each member of the search committee has a vote. And for people who haven't been part of one, they need to understand that they get to vote on who is going to move forward as going to be in the finalist pool. So eventually, you know, it is a school committee decision, but this process was so important because the screening determines who actually the applicants are going to be, and nobody's vote is any more important than anybody else's. It's an equal vote at the table, and the number of votes determine who's moving forward. Is that pretty much sum it up? Yes. That so, I think yeah, Jen good can segue. Speak to there better. we go. So then, as the as the screening committee met with the um, candidates who applied, um, we did have 15 votes um, going towards the, these final four candidates who are now, you know, in play. And so it was um, again, it was a really rigorous process, like what Mina said. Um, we collaborated to write the interview questions and 15 people coming to an agreement on the interview questions yeah. is, is you know like a huge success just in, in and of itself um, and then um, figured out who was going to ask the questions and then the committee screened all of the applicants and chose um, nine to interview and then four to move on mm -hmm. and so that's where we are now and in we're in the final phases here we're um, finishing off reference checking I think I've made in the last few days something like 18 to 20 phone calls to, you know, we're, we're not necessarily only checking the references. They've 
offered us, but also making sure we touch base with a, a member of the Board of Selectmen in the town where they currently work, a member of the school committee in the town where they currently work. Um, for those that are assistant superintendents, we're speaking with the superintendents with whom they work right now. So um, this is, we want to gather as much information as we can possibly gather um, about these final four candidates. I almost said contestants, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> candidates. <laughs> and, um, and, and, and make the right decision. You know, we, yeah. we realize the importance of this decision. Right. And we've tried to, um, through the public forums and through the public interviews and now through the, the references, I think we're. I don't hope I didn't leave anything out. So I there, might there, there are two that I want oh, to Oh, yes, add. very important, <laughs> very important, my bad. Um, no, no, yeah. uh, I think um, once you put forth the four, and you know we had the public forums and the interview schedule, but there were also tours that we gave to the candidates when they visited our district. And there were many, many people who interviewed them, and oh my goodness, you know, I can't imagine what pressure those candidates must have felt to go through such a rigorous process. There were people, um, and you know, the school committee members who volunteered to help with the tour, we were observers. We were not questioning them. We were observing and giving the community a chance to question and ask and assess. So there were folks from the Board of Selectmen, and, and these were all volunteers who came, who made the time to come. Uh, and join the conversation. Like I said, uh, Board of Selectmen, I saw the town manager at one of the interviews for sure. Then um, there was uh, uh, Denise Hildreth from the Youth Commission representing the community. There were members, representatives from HEF, from HPTA, from the Boosters. Um, they were also the entire administrative staff, all the leads. And there were teachers who interviewed. Um, so I feel like it was such a rigorous process through the tour. And, and us, um, as observers, the school committee members, I for sure was observing everything that they were saying, not just saying, but also their body language, all aspects of it. Because it's a very, very crucial decision. It's a very important role. I understand it's a collective. Uh, decision we'll be making uh, at the same, and we're giving every opportunity to the community. But I've personally taken it very, very seriously. Mm -hmm. And so this was just their visit of our um, um, school district. Mm -hmm. But then we did a site visit, and that site visit comprised again of two school committee members, and uh, they were uh, administratives at the highest level, uh, Mrs. Dubow, who is our elementary school principal, and uh, Mr. Bishop was the high school principal. Uh, and we had a representative from the special ed team within the school. And we all went to the different sites over four days, four half days at each uh, candidate's site. And we asked questions of, there were groups of people that they presented. There were parents. Um, there were uh, school committee members, town officials, students. In one instance, um, one of the candidates even had their support staff, including the custodial staff, join the conversation. So it's been so thorough. Mm. It's been so thorough. It's, uh, and one thing I must say is that I really, really admire the candidates who are so well qualified their willingness to go through such a rigorous process so publicly. Mm -hmm. um, it's yeah, quite amazing. Definitely. Yeah, and I was wondering, excuse me, I was wondering, like, there's so much that has gone on in this. It doesn't seem like it's been going on for a very long time. Did, did you guys pull this off like in an amazing amount of time, or is this an average amount of time? It seems like a lot. It's been a very busy month, yeah. for sure. Yes, a very busy month. I would also say, Jim, that we have divided the work, right? Um, and um, you know, everyone has taken their fair share of the load. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we were all there for the interviews, and uh, but with the rest of the work, we have managed to share it. I think part of the reason was also the holidays that are coming up, and us wanting to be ahead of the curve because there are other districts who are looking for superintendents. So we wanted to make sure that we stay ahead of the yeah, curve. And that was part of the reason why we wanted to uh, expedite the process oh, a little bit. But I think we have given every opportunity um, 
you know, and we have reached out to the community. There are folks who, who do wish that there were more people at the public forum, uh, but I think our community in that regard is pretty good. They, they do, uh, there have been people who have looked at uh, the videos, the HCAM Well, videos. I was just going to give credit to HCAM because who needs to come out? They can just stay at home and watch HCAM, right. who always provide us with such wonderful coverage. I know that's what I did. And those interviews got really good views. There you they go. Website. Yeah. There you go. Know. Great. Well, I think that was a great, a really good example for us to really bring up today because it shows the a really good example of the working of the school committee and the things that you point out in terms of that people would not realize, the just the details that go into some of your decision making um, and how you work collaboratively. And I guess I, I want to say, and then as I'm saying it, formulating a question, um, but my comment is how important it is to the superintendent that there be a school committee that works collaboratively with and, and openly. And, and I think it's been such a pleasure working with the school committee with over the past several years, this school committee, we have a lot of fun. Um, there was somebody observing one of your meetings, at one of the candidates who was observing one of the meetings and commented on the fact that this is not the way it happens in their town. And I think that you need to really take credit for that because there's such respect. Um, we're not always looking for agreement. I mean, I think the sign of a healthy committee is that there is disagreement and, and differences of opinion and really great discussion. And I think that's what the town wants to hear, that there's a wide range of, of, of experiences on the committee and that you bring that to your work. Um, and as superintendent, I always look forward to our meetings. It gives me a chance to really have very um, in-depth discussion. And as Jim points out, you're all so smart. You know, you're all so informed. You're all, you are a very intelligent group of people. So it's, it's a really interesting process and something I look forward to every other week and sometimes more often um, when we can come together and really work together. And that's how I feel. I feel that we're partners in our work. Um, so with that said, I guess the question I'm formulating is thinking of a time that was really challenging for you as an individual. And I don't, you don't necessarily have to tell us about the topic, but maybe a time as one of five where things were not maybe going the way in which you had hoped they might go or, you know, and, and a decision that was made that you maybe would have hoped had gone differently. And maybe that hasn't happened, but I just put it out there for you to think about. I have to think about that. I okay. Nothing comes to mind. Yeah. But, I mean, as what, you know, in agreement with all of the things that yeah. you just said, we, I feel like, um, you know, you occasionally you hear stories or you, you just hear about groups who don't write collaborate effectively and I think um, it's definitely a testament to the long-standing members Jean and John they have been such great um, resources of information yes. and and Jean as chair has done an amazing job in sort of guiding mm -hmm. everything but certainly the superintendent search and Nancy um, as vice chair is definitely like she's you know She's ready to go. She's, yes. you know, in her second year, but still, she, she she's absorbed everything she needs to absorb, and I think that she does a, an amazing job um, working with all of us, but with the veteran members of the mm -hmm. of the That's committee. That's a great point. And um, so I, I feel for me, and I don't know if you agree, but the, it just made it a fairly painless process <laughs> to join the committee and and just kind of jump right in. Any questions we had, they would provide us with the answers anytime we need to be point and pointed in a certain direction. Um, you know, they were more than happy to point us in that direction. And same thing with Dr. McLeod. You've mm. been great with oh, that as well. You, so I feel like that yeah. is a huge testament to the sort of the community and the respect and all the right. things that you mentioned. I feel it as a member of this group of people for sure. I think it's a little early to say, you know, we haven't had any strong disagreements. Right. It's not that we haven't had disagreements. I think there have been moments when there are disagreements. But like Jen was saying and you were saying, we've been very respectful about it. That's right. And that, that's the reason why it does not come across strongly um, as if, you know, we are boring or anything. And right. we all understand and respect that we are all giving our time. Yes. And we all deeply, deeply care for the kids and our schools. Mm -hmm. So I think with that in mind, we are able to temper mm -hmm. our um, responses and um, how we view one another's opinions. Right. So you see those that respect in our conversations. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so we're coming down to like the last uh, minute or two, and I wanted to ask one quick thing. Thinking about your role as a school committee member, I'm going to use your word, passion. What, what is your passion that you're looking forward to working on as a member of the school committee? Is it curriculum? Is it policy? Is it community? Like, what, what's exciting you? For me, it's both curriculum and community. I care deeply to bring this community together and utilize all the resources that we have in the community. We have a very rich community in terms of experience and knowledge. We should rely on that more. I think we, ha we are doing a great job there. You are conducting a class at the high school. That's an example. I think that's something I care for. And, and through that, um, you know, continue to work on a stronger curriculum. And for me, really, I think it's it's kind of big picture, but it's the, the student experience, the kids. I feel like that's what it all comes down to. That's why we're all here. That's why the teachers, the principals, everyone is, that's why they're doing what they're doing is, is for the kids mm -hmm. and to make sure that they get the most they can out of their experience. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Absolutely. Thank okay. you for being here. Yes, thanks it's, for having and us. And thank you for being school committee members for the town of Hopkinton. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Dr. McLeod. Thanks. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Every winter in New England, we have an increase in cases of carbon monoxide poisoning. Carbon monoxide is a gas that's indetectable to our senses and can make you very sick or even kill you in a short period of time. Fortunately, carbon monoxide poisoning is entirely preventable. Ensure that you have your heating system and other home equipment maintained and inspected annually. Never operate gas-powered equipment indoors, and never barbecue indoors. Make sure to have working carbon monoxide alarms on every floor of your house and within 15 feet of every bedroom door. They should be tested monthly. When snow falls, take care to make sure that chimneys, heating, and dryer outlets are clear of snow so that exhaust can exit. Similarly, Shovel out your car's exhaust and never allow children or other people to sit in an idle car while you're shoveling it out. If your carbon monoxide alarm ever goes off, don't ignore it. Exit your house and call the fire department. By following these steps, you can protect your family this winter. Hello, my name is Officer John Corden of the Hopkinton Police Department. I'm here to explain some important information regarding opiate overdoses under the Good Samaritan Law, Chapter 94C, Section 34A. First. A person who in good faith seeks medical assistance for someone experiencing a drug-related overdose shall not be charged or prosecuted for possession of a controlled substance. Second, a person who experiences a drug-related overdose and in good faith either seeks medical assistance or other seeking assistance shall not be charged or prosecuted for possession of a controlled substance. Third, the act of seeking medical assistance for someone who is experiencing a drug-related overdose may be used as a mitigating factor in a criminal prosecution under the Controlled Substance Act. Lastly, a person acting in good faith may receive a Narcan prescription and administer it to an individual appearing to be experiencing an opiate-related overdose. For more information, please contact the Hopkinton Police Department or Denise Hildreth, Director of Youth and Family Services. Thank you.